Okay, here's three more problems for my review problems for calculus worksheet. And in this case, we're going to solve three rational equations. So recall a rational expression is basically a fraction where you've got a variable uh, floating around in there. So a couple different ways you could do these. Let's start with number 15. 1 over x plus x over 2 equals 5. So you can really kind of do one of two things, I would say. Um, you can either multiply by the least common uh, multiple of the denominators, or you can simply get common denominators and simplify that way. If you have an inequality, you will need to use common denominators. So if you have greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to, it's going to be imperative that you use common denominators, and you'll see that uh, in the examples in, in the future video. Um, to me, it's probably easier to solve these equations just by multiplying by the least common multiple. So I look at the denominators. I see an x, a 2, and again, you could think about this as being over 1. So the least common multiple of x, 2, and 1 would be, well, 2x. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2x. And then we'll just see what's left over. Okay, so again, we have to distribute. So 2x times 1 over x, the x's will cancel. We'll just be left with 2. And then when I distribute, the 2's will cancel. I'll be left with x squared. And then 2x times 5, that's going to give us 10x. Okay, so at this point, I think, well, we've got a quadratic equation. I see an x squared term in there. Uh, x to the first, which doesn't have to be there, and a constant, again, which technically doesn't have to be there. So I'm going to make one side equal to 0. So I'm going to write my x squared term first. I'm going to subtract my 10x from both sides. And then I've got plus 2. So my first thing would be, well, let's try to factor. But there's no way this is going to factor nicely. Um, so again, my a value in this case is going to be positive 1. My b value is going to be negative 10. My c value is going to be 2. So again, I'm going to use the uh, quadratic formula here. So it says x equals negative b, which will be negative, negative 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times 1 times 2, all over 2 times a. So the negative of negative 10 will be positive 10, plus or minus the square root well, negative 10 squared is going to be 100. We'll have 100 minus 8. 100 minus 8 is going to leave us with 92 over 2. So let's see. Um, 92, does that, square root of 92, does that simplify? So we can make a little factor tree here. So we've got 2 times what? I guess 46. 2 times 46 will give us 92. 92 factors again as 2 and 23. 23 is a prime, so it says we can write 92 as 4 times 23. Well, if we take the square root of the 4, we'll get 2 times the square root of 23. So I'm going to rewrite this as 10 plus or minus the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 23 over 2. That was our original denominator. And now you can just split this up. That's 10 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 times the square root of 23 over 2. Well, 10 over 2 is 5. And then the 2's will cancel. We'll be left with the square root of 23. So these are potential solutions. And I say potential. That's my own terminology here. Just like logarithms, it's possible to get extraneous solutions. So this could... Certainly, it's possible that neither one of these solutions work. Maybe only one of them works. Maybe they both work. So I'm going to leave it as homework to you to check which ones work. So you've got the solution 5 times the square root, or excuse me, 5 plus the square root of 23, and 5 minus the square root of 23. Those are the two possible solutions. And what you're going to have to do is just substitute them back in for x. So five, 1 over 5 plus the square root of 23, 5 plus the square root of 23 over 2. Do the arithmetic and see if you get 5. 
and try 5 minus the square root of 23 and 5 minus the square root of 23 and see if you get 5. So that'll be some good practice with fractions. And hopefully in the comment section, people will go ahead and be nice and indicate if they both work and which one or, one or the other works. So I'm going to be lazy, but I think lazy is in your best interest because it's going to make some of you practice fractions, um, which is good for you. That's the benefit, right, of being the one that makes the videos. You can be lazy if you want. So again, sometimes it's good, you know, People often complain about textbooks leaving out steps, and that's why your textbook is a thousand pages instead of ten million pages. Sometimes you have to leave out steps. That's one of the most important things I learned as a student, especially in higher math classes. You know, some of these proofs I would read through would be a nightmare. I would think, man, you all have left out so many steps. But a lot of the understanding for me would to be to go back and try to fill in the steps. So the moral of the story is practice makes perfect. Um, you have to do it for yourself sometimes. So, okay. Sorry for the little soliloquy there. Number 16, 2x minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 3. So, okay, we can write 3 as 3 over 1. What I'm going to do is just cross multiply. So when you have a fraction equals a fraction, that's usually what I do. So again, if you have a over b equals c over d, remember you can just multiply a times d equals b times c. So that's the cross multiplication. You're just getting rid of the fraction. So I'm going to put in parentheses just to emphasize we have to distribute. So you'd have 1 times 2x minus 1. And then we would have 3 times x plus 1. Well, we've got 2x minus 1. We've got to distribute. We'd have 3x plus 3. Okay, well, this is just a linear equation. If we subtract 2x from both sides, we'll have x on the right side. If we subtract 3 from both sides, Negative 1 minus 3 will give us negative 4. And, okay, so this one's easy. I'm going to check it. So we've got 2 times negative 4 minus 1 over negative 4 plus 1. Does that equal 3? Well, let's see. That's negative 8 minus 1, which is negative 9 over negative 3. Hey, definitely that does equal 3. So it says x equals negative 4 is a solution. All right, last but not least, let's do number 17. So again, these aren't the hardest rational equations in the world, but again, the idea is the same. You just either get common denominators, and if you have lots of fractions, right, that's going to take potentially a lot of algebra, but the idea is the same, or you just multiply by the least common multiple. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to multiply by the least common multiple of the denominators, which in this case will be x times x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by x times x minus 1. Distribute, we'll cancel out some common factors, and then we'll see what we have left over. Okay, so if we distribute to the first term, the x's are going to cancel. So we'll be left with 3 times x minus 1. When I distribute to the second term, the x minus 1's will cancel. So we'll have 5x. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning up the right side. We would have, if we distribute the x, we'll have x squared minus x in the brackets. I'm going to put the 4 out front. So we've got 3x minus 3 minus 5x equals 4x squared minus 4x on the right. Same thing, I've got a quadratic equation. Um, I'm either going to try to factor it or, again, just use the quadratic formula. I like my x squared term to stay positive, so I'm going to keep the 4x squared on the right. Let's see, 3x, let's go ahead and simplify the left side. 3x minus 5x will be negative 2x. We've still got our minus 3 there. We've got our minus 4x still. So 4x squared is hanging out. If we add 2x to both sides, we'll have a negative 2x on the right. And if we add 3 to both sides, we'll have a positive 3 on the right. Um, let's see. So does this factor nicely? Um, it might, but I don't think. I don't see how. You would have to use a 2 and a 2. Um, 6s and 3s. I don't think it's going to factor nicely. So same thing. A equals 4. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. B equals negative 2. C equals positive 3. You may have some more homework here before we're over. So x equals negative b 
plus or minus the square root of b squared, oh, this one's going to be nice, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 3, all over 2 times a, which is 4. And I'm going to stop right here because, again, we want real solutions. Notice underneath the the radical, if you simplify, you're going to have 4 minus, well, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16 times 3 is going to be, uh, what's it, 16 times 3, 48. So we're going to have 4 minus 48 underneath the radical, which is going to be negative 44, which is going to be complex or imaginary. So that already tells me that this equation has no real solutions. So you got off the hook, no more homework. Okay, so again, same idea, you know, if you had three fractions, four fractions, five fractions, um, same idea, you're going to multiply by the least common multiple of the denominators. The only thing that's going to get worse is, obviously, you're going to have a lot more things to distribute. It's just going to be a much higher degree polynomial. Um, but other than that, it's just distributing, collecting like terms, and trying to factor. So, all right, there's some rational equations. Again, inequalities are going to be a bit more difficult because you have to find solutions or make, make it undefined make a number line. There's a lot more work when dealing with inequalities than when dealing with equations, as you will see. So, all right, I hope this was a good little quick refresher for rational equations. Again, not the hardest ones in the world, but again, just a little idea just to refresh you on the procedure.